Okay, so every year on mission trip, I don't know why this happens every year, but every single year without fail, Lily Harrison's mattress deflates. Like every single year, Holly has to go to Walmart and buy her a new one. Like we wake up in the middle of the night and she's laying on the floor and it is so funny. When I think of St. Andrews, specifically the youth group, I think of this one moment where I was on mission trip in Lake Providence, Louisiana, and we were doing a prayer walk and Mackenzie Davis caught her hair on fire. Uh, the funniest St. Andrew moment was probably two or three years ago on mission trip uh, when uh, it was already lights out and uh, I was a sophomore at the time and the junior guys were like throwing water bottles across the room. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, it was uh, the junior ski trip. I was in ski school and we accidentally lost the ski instructor on the other side of the mountain. Me and three other guys, we all uh, just kind of ended up skiing the rest of the day. And then when we finally got back, the ski instructor was kind of like, oh, where were you guys? And we're like, skiing. Uh, my funniest moment at San Andrew was probably hearing that Michael was going to go get Carl's Jr. at one in the morning at Camp Impact and ended up taking off the entire bottom half of the sky. Definitely um, swimming in that pond during the summer and then having the floaties explode and having the water. My funniest St. Andrew moment has to be Michael busting me, George, and Carson for going to Smoothie King freshman mission trip. So looking back, it was one of my first trips with the church ever. It was the middle school retreat. I was in eighth grade. Uh, I think this was, right around, this was right around the time we started confirmation. We came on the trip and a bunch of us were a little... Uh, a little rambunctious and mischievous on the trip, I will admit. We've, we weren't the best group of kids to be taken out on this church trip, uh, but we all ended up okay. But the funny story, the funny part of the story is uh, Aaron Pugh was our cabin leader, and uh, a bunch of the guys that were in our cabin decided to be really loud and start yelling and stuff when it was really late and everyone was supposed to be asleep. And Aaron got up, turned the lights on, and screamed at us. And uh, it was a really funny story if you were there. Um, he said a bad word, <laughs> but it was great. Two of my most memorable funny moments. Um, the first one is when Emerson and I broke into the kitchen on Houston mission trip to make mac and cheese and we broke the microwave. Um, An honorable mention goes to when Rolex started playing during prayer walk. It's unforgettable. <laughs> um, funniest St. Andrew moment might be like at Camp Impact when we have dance party and like everyone's going crazy and then Brian Drew sings like uh, the Romeo and Juliet song by Taylor Swift. Oh, that'd be mission trip. Uh, it was one of the ones where all the guys were packed into one gym, and it was one of the tiny ones. And then I think it was like some adult had just left the room, and it was after we had all gotten back and were kind of just chilling before worship. And some guys just popped up with these like loaves of stale bread and started chucking them at each other. And the entire, like the entirety of every single guy on that mission trip just started picking up bread and throwing at each other. Great. Uh, I think my funny St. Andrew moment was when we snuck up on the roof during 11 a.m. service. Sorry, Brian. My funniest St. Andrew moment would be um, being caught on the roof of the church during service. My funniest St. Andrew moment would be going on the roof during service with some of the guys. St. Andrew has always been a home to me, and it's just been a place that I can go outside of school, outside of sports, um, where I feel like I can be fully myself and I can worship Jesus just uh, in like the best way possible. Home and family, just the acceptance here and all the people are just great. Family, um, I have absolutely loved coming to um, Sunday School and Lighthouse and 412 and just knowing that like I'm accepted and I have friends that are going to love me and youth pastors that are going to do the same and just make sure that, you know, they, that I know that they're my family. I think the first word that comes to mind for me is just community because I've grown up in the church and it's always just been a place where I can be surrounded by such great people who help me grow as a person and grow in my faith. Man, it's like a, it's like a second home where you kind of just get a break from the rest of the world, focus on yourself, your, your peers, and God. 
Mace St. Andrew is a place with people that you call family. It's a place to go, and it's a home away from home. St. Andrew is just a constant in my entire life. I can, I know that whenever things are changing, St. Andrew is always the same. St. Andrew to me is a family where I can come and be open, be myself. Um, there's not one person here that I don't feel comfortable with, hang out with, and just be a friend to. I would say it's like a space, like they say, like to feel home um, and comfortable. I can be myself, I can be goofy, and always have people that are going to match my same energy um, and not judge me for being who I am. Uh, all the moments with my covenant groups and going to lunch with them. My favorite Jesus moment would probably be when I was like a retreat counselor my, I think it was my sophomore year, and I did a going public, and that was just like, I felt close to God, and that was my favorite moment. I can't remember if it was like during our prayer walk or something, but we had outdoor worship, and it was like the most memorable worship, and then I'm pretty sure that night afterwards we had like a silent night, and I just remember like, after that worship was so good and then I sat outside and talked to Devin Dusick for so long and like we could hear coyotes howling and I just remember like that was the coolest moment of my life. Like that was awesome. When we went to Oklahoma mission trip and there was a lady who had to have water in her house out of a faucet for I think she said three years and we replaced it for her and she was really grateful and she was going around saying bless you, bless you to every single person in the group. And I thought that was really humbling and all that, but I mean, I think that was the closest time I've ever been to God. Camp Impact, my sophomore year, I believe was when we did the keys. Um, I really enjoyed that and then I remember uh, Josh and his wife came out and did their performance, which was really awesome and super impactful. And I remember uh, I went and saw one of my buddies who's like crouched over crying because he was just feeling feeling it. And I went over and talked to him. And then uh, Michael, you actually came over and prayed over me. And you told me at the end of it, you said uh, sometimes you feel like Michael's praying and sometimes you feel like God's praying. And you told me that. Uh, you felt like God was praying through you that night, and I'll never forget that, and that was a moment that will stick with me forever. Um, I remember one time I was on mission trip, and I got up on stage and shared um, a going public about my story, and it was super moving to just have people come out and tell me that they felt the same and that they um, identified with my story. Oh, I always really loved being a part of worship, whether I was you know, actually performing or just being in the audience. It always felt very, very safe and welcoming and home? Um, I would say, okay, so I have an interesting answer. I think it was less a feeling close to God, but more the security of God in prayer. Um, but it was when I first came to Holly with a very serious issue of mine, and when I had talked to her, I just knew that I was going to have prayer and support from the church, and in that moment I felt very secure in my community and with God. The first worship night when we were all outside in the parking lot, um, we, I just felt like so connected with God because we had not through this whole year with COVID, it just was so hard to connect to God, and I felt like I was kind of like struggling a little bit. And that worship, that first worship night, definitely helped me like strengthen my faith and connect and like rekindle that like relationship with God, and especially being with everyone else. It just was a really great night. I'll probably say at the most recent camp impact that I uh, went on when we did this thing where we had to carry like sand from uh, along a trail and it was about how we had to let go of uh, kind of things of this world and it was just, I don't know, I just felt really close to everyone there and to God when we did that. Uh, thanks for uh, putting up all my screw ups for the past ten and a half years give or take around there and uh, I hope I can make you proud when I leave August 2nd. Um, I want to say that I'm going to miss you so much and I'll definitely call you because I know I'll need help and I hope that we still have a great relationship and take care of Sadie. Gosh, hmm, 
mom and dad, you guys are awesome. Um, thank you for having my back no matter what, um, constantly encouraging me and supporting me and pushing me past my limits just to follow my dreams and listen to my heart and obviously like encouraging my faith as well because y'all have been a huge part in my relationship with the Lord and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And Reese too, you rock. Mom and dad, I want to thank y'all for everything that y'all have ever done for me. Um, I really appreciate the way that y'all have raised me and I uh, am extremely grateful to have grown up in such a loving household and uh, just to be able to not be afraid of y'all and be able to talk to y'all about anything that I could ever need to talk to y'all about, I really appreciate. And uh, yeah, I, I love y'all. Um, thank you mom for all the meals. They were delicious and I'm gonna miss you guys. Um, thank you for putting up with me eating every single bit of food in the house. And I am truly sorry that you will just not have me and my constant sweatiness all over the house. Um, Mom and Dad, I would not be where I am without you guys instilling the value of having Christ in my life, and I love you so much. I love you, Mom and Dad. Sorry I won't be able to watch TV with you anymore. I was going to say, I love y'all. Y'all are the best, and thank you for all you've done for me throughout the years. Uh, Mom, Dad, thank you for supporting me all these years. Sorry I couldn't keep my room, my room clean as much as you wanted to. Rhett, thanks for being a great brother to me. Um, I want to say thank you for everything, like, they have prepared me, I think, for so many of the like, obstacles I could face in life, and I just love them very much. I would like to say uh, thank you, and I love you all. Um, to my family, thank you for sticking by me through all the rough. We made it through finally, which is amazing, and I love you so much. <laughs> uh, thanks for raising me, and thanks for making me who I am today, always being there for me and supporting me. Thank you for supporting me. Um, thank you for accepting me as I am and for loving me um, and for pushing me to be my best in life and in my faith. Um, thank you for waking me up and for fourth and fifth grade Sunday school um, and making church someplace where I had to come so that eventually I would love it. Um, I just appreciate you guys and I love you. Thank you for um, putting up with me for 18 years. Um, uh, I've, I've, I'm, I act excited to move out, but it, I, I think I'm really going to miss him, so thank you. Um, I would just like to say thank you for always supporting me in everything that I do. I've got a lot of activities going on and they really just go out of their way to support me in everything. Um, and they've really stepped out of their comfort zone and been as involved with the church as I have been. Like, I love TCA and I love the people that are there and like that would never have happened to me without my parents and like through that they have like supported me and like I used to get so mad at them for like the stuff they would make me do and like the stuff that like they would like enforce almost like the boundaries and the rules and like the guidelines that they created for us but like looking back I see people who didn't have that stuff and I'm just like so thankful for like who my parents raised me to be and like what they did in my life. Man well first I'd like to thank my parents for the countless support like driving me places after school picking me up late at night. I'd have to say thank you for allowing me to grow as a person in both my personal life and my faith life. Love you all so much and just thank you for raising me, always being beside me. Uh, thank you for all that you've put up with and you know, thank you for pouring into me. Just thank you for investing in me. Thank you for bringing me to church whenever I was younger. So whenever I became in high school that I could continue these relationships and continue to grow my faith. Uh, just thanks for always being there and helping me uh, just get to church every week basically before I got my license and helping me grow my faith. Um, just thank you for letting me be who I want to be and making me come to church when I was little so then I could come on when I'm older. Uh, just thank you so much for being so accepting and pushing me to be the best I can. I would say thank you for loving me and supporting me in everything that I've done throughout my entire life and I love y'all. You're finally free! <laughs> That's it? Uh, sure.